Hello there everybody, Peter of England bringing you a very important video uh, on a topic called Treachery, Treason, Sedition and Betrayal. Now many of you are aware that the Mueller report uh, was released some weeks ago, if not months ago, and what we had uh, early last week uh, was a, a, a subpoena for Robert Mueller who was the special investigator into the so-called Russian collusion by Donald Trump, give his testimony on Capitol Hill to a, uh, a select committee of both Democrats and Republicans. And unless you've been living on planet Mars for the last uh, few days, you will be aware that the outcome for the Democrats who were hoping for more ammunition against Donald Trump was a complete catastrophe. So it's been titled or entitled Disaster Day for the Democrats. Now, why this is important and why I'm bringing this to the attention of predominantly for now the American audience, but please for those in Europe and uh, particularly in the United Kingdom, pay attention. What I want to drill down on today, specifically in this video, which is going to be a little bit longer than my normal videos, but there's a lot of information in it, so please pay attention and listen carefully. What we are looking at here is, as I mentioned in the opening lines here, treason, treachery, sedition, and above all, capital punishment. When Brett Kavanaugh, who was elected onto the Supreme Court, uh, was interviewed, by um, the, the select committee, what he was asked the questions on was the relevance of the death penalty to American citizens, both overseas and both, uh, sorry, and in the United States as well. Lindsey Graham, if you look for the video, uh, was the one who was interviewing and specifically asked the question, is the death penalty still in force? Is there a precedent? There are two precedents. The precedents uh, relate to certain uh, trials just after the Second World War. And what we also have is the fact that three days after 9-11, a state of emergency was declared. So that was on the, uh, the 14th of September 2001. And that is in effect still in place. Which means that it is a capital crime to involve yourself in any treasonous or traitorous act against the United States and its people. Now, why is this important? Be under no delusion. The Democratic Party and the globalist fake news are drilling down methodically on one thing. That Donald Trump betrayed the people of the United States and the political machine, which is the Congress and Senate of the United States, and therefore, if the collusion, if the conspiracy with other uh, foreign parties or countries is proven, to their satisfaction anyway, what this would mean is not only would Donald Trump be impeached, but would be in uh, very grave jeopardy, jeopardy of losing his life through lethal injection or being hung. Because... It is a capital offence for anyone in the United States, a United States citizen, to involve himself in treason or treachery. Now, what the fake media have done since Donald Trump came into office is they are trying to divert you. They are trying to confuse you. They are trying to dumb you down. They are trying to persuade you that another agenda exists. They're drumming this Russian story that's been going around the block since 1945. It's the Russians that did it. For those in America, look at the McCarthy trials. Again, Russians. Uh, the way that Lyndon Johnson beat Coke Stevenson in the 1948 Senate runoff in Texas. Again, the Russians. All that Lyndon Baines Johnson did is accuse Coke Stevenson, one of the most reputable uh, governors that had been in, uh, in Texas history, they accused him of being a sympathizer with Russians and the trade unions. And that story, promoted day in, day out for the period of the election, was sufficient 
eventually, with the ballot rigging that Lyndon Baines Johnson uh, was involved in, uh, especially in ballot box 13, to gain that Senate seat. The rest is history. So, the media protects the establishment. The media protects the politicians. The media protects the paedophile rings. The media protects people like Jeffrey Epstein, who is very much in the news at the moment because of his contacts globally. Contacts with the royal family. Contacts with Prince Andrew. Contacts via the Lolita Express to uh, Little St. James uh, Island. Uh, the people that are involved, the web stretches globally. And there are many individuals who are now going to be implicated. So what has in effect happened is, while the Democrats are busy drilling down trying to impeach Donald Trump, accuse him of a capital crime and have him hung, what is going on by the side is a, a slight boomerang effect. This is a side shot that's been taken at the deep state because the paedophilia and the human trafficking and the money laundering, once exposed, will bring the house of cards down. Not to mention the FISA report, which is about now, though I did a video in October of last year saying, wait for the FISA declassification. The FISA declassification has been uh, um, already made, but it hasn't been made public. And once the FISA declassification comes through, the likes of the Gang of Eight, the Comey, the Clapper, the Loretta Lynch, uh, Page, um, Brennan, uh, Adam Schiff, are all going to be brought to account. And what we have is them being brought to account by a renovated and overturned judicial system now, which is a much cleaner operating mechanism than it was before. On Friday, uh, that would be the 27th, I think, Friday the 27th, the Congress and the Senate of the United States broke for their six-week summer recess. It is no coincidence that Attorney General William Barr on that very day reintroduced something that has not been on the books for the past 20 years in the United States. And that is, what he did is send a very clear message to those individuals who are engaged in treason and um, treachery against the United States. And that was the introduction or reintroduction of a uh, death penalty, a capital offence for federal crimes. There are state crimes, there are federal crimes. State just basically involves the local police because of what some, some, something's happened in the locality. A federal crime is something that typically is investigated by the DEA, um, the Drug Enforcement Agency, um, and also by the FBI. It's usually interstate or cross-border. So, this is very interesting and very uh, poignant because it comes under what's called United States Code Chapter, and I'm just reading this, Chapter 115, Paragraph 2381. Treason punishable by death. Have you got that? Treason punishable by death. Further backed up by 18 United States Code 1940 edition, paragraphs 1, 2 of March the 4th, 1909, and chapter 321, sections 1, 2 and 35, statute 1088. So, for those bookworms and those people who like the, the, the factual element of this and to look up the actual law, please go and just replay that part of the video again, and go looking. So, I just want to reiterate the, the, the dire consequences of what's going on in the United States. So, whatever's happening in the United States, those who are trying to persecute Donald Trump and his administration are persecuting him because they never expected to lose the election. What they had was a rigged electoral system with a false die bold uh, vote counting mechanism so that they could rig the number of votes in the swing states. However, what Hillary didn't anticipate is that people would get there behind and put a back door into that software. So, Hillary was never meant to lose. But if she was going to lose, then 
Peter, people like Peter Strzok from the FBI and Lisa Page had a backdoor mechanism where what they were doing collectively with Brennan from the CIA and from the NSA uh, Clapper, so Clapper, Brennan, Comey and the whole entourage including Obama, they were there to ensure that Donald Trump would be disparaged, would be compromised in many ways, especially in the minds and eyes of the American people, by a false narrative of collusion with the Russians being placed upon him. So they needed false evidence, and the Brits were the ones that provided the false evidence. And when this story breaks, it'll have implications in the United Kingdom for people like Robert Peter Hannigan, who retired from GCHQ. He was the director of GCHQ in Cheltenham. Robert Peter Hannigan, crony of Tony Blair, um, involved possibly in paedophilia or involved in paedophilia rings. Um, Robert Hannigan was one of the main proponents who provided the surveillance raw SIGINT data to Comey and the FBI and the other uh, factors who were looking to bring uh, Donald Trump down. And Robert Peter Hannigan retired, or took early retirement from GCHQ mysteriously just after um, Trump got elected in November um, uh, 2018. So, massive implications not only for MI5 and the security services in the United Kingdom, but also for the royal family. What you've got to remember is the royals are as deep into this as either Theresa May or Comey or Obama or the Clintons. They are all working within the same network. It's all the same agenda. So what I'm offering to you today on this video for those people who are borderline or for those people who are quite dismissive of the fact that there is a global conspiracy or there is this degree of corruption and nepotism and cronyism. These are the facts. These facts will be revealed. Listen to the, the Mueller um, uh, questioning from last week, for those in doubt. Listen to the questions predominantly posed to Mueller by the Republicans. Those were the most pertinent questions. Look at the man himself. Very aged, incompetent, had not interviewed virtually any of the witnesses. Ruined many people's lives, like General Flynn, and about to do it with people like Roger Stowe, with Manafort, with Cohen put in jail, uh, Papadopoulos. So all these people's lives were trod trodden underfoot by a most unscrupulous individual, as from what I can see, the best things that he probably did in the last two years, or the, the extent of his workload, was probably sitting at home, drinking coffee, taking the dog for a walk, and very little else. He seemed to have no idea about his own report. He kept referring to it as it being um, the sole, um, the sole uh, biblical reference for any of the points that had been made. He was not dynamic, and he didn't have any corresponding or additional evidence really to give to anyone. So, uh, we've had... Fake narrative for two years. Two years of Muller, Pelosi, uh, Adam Schiff, Schumer, Mad Maxine, Waters, all running down the clock trying the same narrative. And every time they find that they failed and the fact that Muller blew up in their, in their faces because he didn't uh, give any additional evidence, what we find is that they still want more, more, more. They're talking now about impeachment again, and will they ever let it go? The reason that they won't let it go is because of the boomerang effect. Treason, treachery, betrayal. Capital offences under United States Code, Chapter 1152381. Capital offences. The offences that they wanted to lay on the back and on the shoulders of Donald Trump and his uh, entourage are the same things that are going to come around now and hit them right in the back of the head. Death penalty, 
for treason, Mr. Comey. Death penalty, Adam Schiff, Schumer, Pelosi, Clapper, Maxine Waters, the Gang of Eight, the other additional people who were involved in trying to bring down a duly, democratically elected President of the United States covertly with false evidence. Irrefutable. If you hear or read of anything different from the fake news, the BBC, Sky, Washington Post, Washington Examiner, Los Angeles Times, etc., you know it's fake. Examples? Straight away. Let's look at an example in United Kingdom. For those people in the United States, you will have heard of this character, I am sure. Tommy Robinson, recently set up and sent to jail on a contempt charge, put into the most maximum secure prison in the United Kingdom. Yet, the Daily Star newspaper, about a week ago, runs a story, a major story, that Tommy Robinson, in the showers, had been hit by a 70-year-old lag, which is a, a, a euphemism for a, a, a well-seasoned, uh, probably, visitor to the, the penal institute, and had knocked him down on the floor because Tommy Robinson was being, or acting, too much of a celebrity. And when you do things like that in prison, it comes back to haunt you straight away. Ezra Levant, a friend of Tommy Robinson, went to Belmarsh, interviewed him, coincidentally, the interview obviously pre-prepared, and finds out that Tommy Robinson is in such seclusion that he does not mix or see even one other prisoner a day. He has two people on every door that he has to pass on, out through to go to the exercise yard. He uses the gymnasium on his own. He's in 24-hour, seven days a week, solitary confinement, and Tommy Robinson, through Ezra Levant, Levant, reveals categorically that he was not in a communal shower and he did not get hit by another prisoner. He's in virtually the same type of wing under seclusion as is Julian Assange. Something more pertinent in the United States, for the United States people listening to this, um, Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein. First of all, we had a power outage uh, about eight days ago in New York. Possible attempt to get at Epstein, who is in New York, uh, under custody. However, then what we find is all the reports in the newspapers say that uh, Jeffrey Epstein has probably tried to commit suicide and was found in a fetal position in his, own, in his uh, prison cell with marks on his neck. Right. Ask yourself this. Why would someone who is have, uh, on appeal for bail to be released, someone who has offered 100 million personal bail bond to be allowed to be released, someone who wanted to go back to his own apartment in New York, why would an individual like that, prior to the appeal being even answered, suddenly, mysteriously, decide that he wanted to commit suicide. So, think logical, think for yourself, and please just remember that there is a whole raft of information coming, and there is another video that I'm going to do straight after this one, so no flicking, stay tuned, and this is about our Mr. Obama and the false narrative by the fake news media and the cover-up internationally that kept him in power for eight years up until 2018. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, and look at the links to references. Peter England saying thank you.